Today is the anniversary of the deadly Twin Parks fire in the Bronx, where at least two automatic closing doors did not work and let smoke loose throughout the building. The city council has done some work to try to get at that very problem. So here to tell us about it is Bronx Councilwoman Perina Sanchez. Her district is right next door to the fire. Uh, welcome, Councilwoman. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about the past year. Can you tell us about the progress and all the work the council has done about the automatic closing door situation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and first, want to just hearts and prayers with the with all the families that were affected a year ago today. The council has taken action. You know, uh, first and foremost, we know that the proximate cause what happened in that building was that a space heater malfunctioned, a set fire to a mattress, and subsequently that fire was not contained into the unit it was spread it was able to spread across the building because there were self-closing door failures and so the the city council you know and I, and I talk about the proximate cause, we passed legislation to make space heaters safer, to make sure that they have automatic shutoff, to require that they have thermostat function, uh, that there, there cannot be another situation where a space heater is on for three days uh, and, and still the, the space heater runs, is able to malfunction and prevent a tragedy like this. We also passed legislation requiring self-closing doors to be, uh, to be rectified much more quickly mm -hmm. so it used to be that a landlord would have several weeks uh, almost a month to mm -hmm. resolve a self-closing door now they must do it much quicker but i want to i want to take a step back from these proximate causes and talk about what underlie underlie this fire there was inadequate heat in that building. It was a family who did not have enough heat and they felt like they needed to rely on a space heater in order to heat yeah. their home and keep their family safe. And that's really what's in the crosshairs. And and, and on that matter, uh, we've, we've held hearings, we've, we're continuing to look at legislation. I have a bill that would require electronic monitoring, so with thermos, uh, uh, thermometers that are feeding the city via Bluetooth information live about what the conditions are in buildings for those worst landlords. And we're going to continue to pursue legislation yeah. that does more to protect tenants. So, and, and that's fantastic that there, are, that there are kind of all systems go when it comes to so many different facets of the issues that were at play here, right? And I know Monica Morales very well. She covers heating issues throughout the city. That's one facet, but on the door front, you, the legislation is great, but who is actually enforcing it, right? Because we know that landlords sometimes won't do the necessary repairs and it'll linger. So who's there to enforce it and hold them accountable? Absolutely. So the city's Department of Housing Preservation and Development is responsible for looking at tenant doors. FDNY is responsible for looking at self-closing doors and hallways. Um, and, you know, that's actually part of the issue that we've uncovered throughout the course of the hearings that the council has had, is that these agencies were not talking to each other. Yeah. The FDNY was not telling the Housing Preservation and Development and vice versa if there was a if there was a door that had a deficiency within a building. So now that, that coordination is happening. And, you know, I, I want to I talk about all the work that we're doing, but I, I don't want the public to think that, you know, we're, we're patting ourselves on the back. The city has a long way to go. You know, there's a there's a report coming out today by the city controller that is showing that in heat cases and cases where people are calling 311, just 3% of the time are those calls resulting in a violation. 3%. Mm, yeah. So out of 800,000 calls and, and complaints, only 21,000 tickets were violations were issued between 2017 and 2020. Uh, 2022. And so there's there's a serious issue, a serious problem happening here. And we know that we cannot let up until tenants are actually and truly safe and warm within their homes. But what about when the city is the landlord? I mean, a lot of those tenants are wondering when you live in a NYCHA building and the heat's not working, how do you Absolutely. make sure that that gets fixed quickly? Absolutely. NYCHA is, you know, is, is facing a crisis of astronomical proportions. As we know, the backlog in, in cases are, are really astronomical. And the city, the state, and the federal government have a responsibility to step in here. I would argue from a previous administration, there were historic investments made, but nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough to make sure that people, that our neighbors who live in NYCHA are safe within their homes. And so it's it's unfortunate, you know, last last Christmas, uh, I was out in, Ford, Ford, in front of Ford Independence Houses, which is in my district in, in the Northwest Bronx, uh, as the housing chair. And I was out there with my neighbors because they were 
you know, for the ninth day straight without heat and hot water exactly. in their building. And so it, it shouldn't have to be that elected officials, uh, you know, city council members, others, that we go out there and that's how we get attention for these buildings and these uh, tenants that are suffering. But right now, you know, that it, it is unfortunate that we need to have the federal government and the state government come together with the city to put more funds into addressing the root mm -hmm. causes problems at NYCHA. So most of the victims in the Twin Parks fire, they were Gambian immigrants, right? Uh, and we know there's been a lot of outreach to immigrant communities since. We're, we're a year later, right? And looking at the totality of it all, are the folks in those buildings, in these communities, are they in a better place than they were a year ago? You know, I, I want to I wanna be frank. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. There's, there's going to be more attention to self-closing doors. There's going to be more attention to space heaters. But the reality is that the violation level, the level of violations that need to be issued and the, the city's accountability processes need to be improved so that our communities are, are truly safe. I, you know, I, I represent the Northwest Bronx. I'm the chair of the New York City Council's uh, Committee on Housing and Buildings. It is my responsibility with my colleagues to provide oversight on the city's functions. And what I'm uncovering and we're uncovering in this council is that we have a long, long way to go. So we're we we're encouraging tenants to continue to call 311 to every single time that there's an issue in your building, make it known to the city because that's how we collect good data. But the fact of the matter is, is that although we are you're gonna be safer in your home this year than you were unfortunately last year, there is so much work left to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still a lot of work to be done. Uh, City Councilwoman Perina Sanchez, thank you so much again for your time. We appreciate it.